In this video, we'll be looking at the Southern Baptist Convention, the largest Baptist denomination in the USA and also the largest Protestant denomination, the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, which split from the SBC in 2002, and the General Association of Regular Baptist Churches, or GARB, which began from churches leaving the Northern Baptist Convention in 1932. I will refer to all three of these as denominations, though especially GARB churchgoers and to some extent the CBF as well may initially have a problem with this. I do not mean by denomination any kind of structured organization. Instead, the definition used on this channel is any set of congregations identifiable by traits such as a name, peculiar history, organization, leadership, theological doctrine, worship style, and sometimes a founder. In other words, since we can identify these churches by name, by this loose definition, they are a denomination. All three denominations affirm that there is one God and affirm the Trinity. On other major doctrines of Christianity, like the virgin birth, Christ's deity, and literal resurrection, these are absolute requirements in the SBC and garb, and churches that teach otherwise risk expulsion. In the CBF, nearly all churches affirm these two, but even so, a church can question or differ on these doctrines and remain apart. There are two ordinances in all three groups, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Ordinances is the proper term for garb churches, and nearly all SBC churches would say the same. In CBF, some churches use the term sacraments. Baptism in all three denominations is for believers and not infants. In garb churches and the SBC, it is only by immersion. That is nearly always the case in the CBF, but there is room for exceptions. In SBC churches, most churches will require rebaptism if you were previously baptized as an infant or by a mode other than immersion. This is also the case in garb churches. In CBF churches, most will not require rebaptism. All three denominations typically view the Lord's Supper as symbolic without a real presence of Christ in the elements. Who can participate in communion? In garb churches, generally, you must be at least a baptized believer. In SBC churches and CBF churches, some require you to be a baptized believer, but the majority only require that you be a professing Christian. The minority that require baptism is a larger percentage in the SBC than the CBF. All three denominations use the 66-book canon of Old and New Testaments as scripture. For the SBC and Garb churches, the position is that the Bible is without error. Some churches in the CBF believe this as well, but most do not believe in inerrancy. All three denominations use a variety of Bible translations. On creation and evolution, SBC churches and affiliated schools teach special creation and are generally opposed to the idea of human evolution. This is also the position of garb churches. There are more exceptions in the SBC than you would find in garb churches. Belief in human evolution is generally acceptable in the CBF, but there's no official position. On salvation, SBC and garb churches teach that a person must be born again, which takes place in a moment of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. This view is taught in some CBF churches, but others view salvation differently. There's a lot of room for diversity of belief on this. Both SBC and Garb churches likewise teach an eternal hell for the unsaved, which is not required or taught in all CBF churches. On Reformed theology or Calvinism, none of the three denominations are Calvinist. The SBC has a sizable minority who affirm five or four points of Calvinism. Garb churches are not Calvinist. In the CBF, there's no position stating a church cannot be Calvinist, but in reality, virtually none are. The vast majority of SBC churches believe in eternal security, that a person cannot, after salvation, apostatize and be lost. Garb churches affirm eternal security, and this is not a required position of the CBF, and churches have varying views on this like they do on salvation itself. None of the three denominations teach an entire sanctification experience after salvation. Most SBC churches are cessationist, believing that certain miraculous gifts like speaking in tongues have ceased. There are also continuationists and a very small minority that could be called charismatic. The CBF has no position on this. Very few churches could be considered charismatic, but neither would many take a stance as requiring cessationism. Garb churches are generally cessationist. On end times, for the SBC, there's a lot of diversity, with premillennialism probably still in the majority, but plenty of room for other views. There's no required view on the timing of the rapture. The CBF has no position on end times, and most churches don't take a position either, being practically amillennial. For garb churches, premillennialism is required to be a part, as well as affirmation of a pre-tribulation rapture. Both the SBC and General Association of Regular Baptists require churches that are a part to not teach that homosexuality is an acceptable lifestyle. Their churches will not ordain same-sex clergy or perform gay marriages. 
In the CBF, some churches are this way, and there is a spectrum all the way to some churches being fully affirming of the LGBT movement and some having LGBT clergy. On abortion, the SBC and GARB churches are strongly anti-abortion, and the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship has no official position, nor have they made any statements on the matter. The worship style in these churches can vary, so nothing can be said across the board. In all three denominations, there are some congregations that have mostly traditional worship and hymnody, while others have contemporary praise worship. 24% of CBF respondents in a 2020 poll said their church offers liturgical worship. The SBC and General Association of Regular Baptist Churches have both issued many statements in opposition to drinking alcohol, and many churches require total abstinence of their members. The CBF has not made any statements on alcohol. On tithing, the SBC and GARB churches generally do teach tithing, and the CBF has no position, but some churches do teach it. GARB churches have additionally made conference statements opposed to Freemasonry. While views in the SBC are more mixed, with some churches allowing it and the CBF having no position. Among some Baptists, there is a view of Baptist history and authority called landmarkism that Baptist churches have been started by other Baptist churches in a chain back to the time of Christ. This position is officially opposed by GARB. CBF churches do not teach this, and only a small minority of SBC churches today teach it. All three denominations are entirely congregational. Any church can withdraw from any of the three for any reason. All three have the offices of pastor and deacon. In local churches of each, there may be also a church board. In the CBF, women may serve at all levels. In the SBC, officially, women may not be pastors, though there have been occasional exceptions. As for deacons, in the SBC, most churches don't have female deacons, but some do. Garb churches don't allow women to be deacons, and CBF churches do. The CBF alone is part of the Baptist World Alliance. In the SBC, there are over 47,500 churches. The CBF CBF has 1,800 churches, and GARB has 1,300 churches. There's a whole bunch more you need to know about these three, and that is shared in the three full-length videos here on Ready to Harvest, one on each of these three denominations. Subscribe for more denomination comparisons like this one.